So, um, hi. Um, welcome to an episode of Dear Worth or Wednesdays with Worthington, hashtag meal prep Mondays. So pretty much, excuse me, what this means is on Mondays, I typically on either Sundays or Mondays, for my myself and my clients, I tend to get all of our meal preps ready. Um simply at home um, using my own recipes and my own techniques to eating healthy and using as less sodium and staying away from preservatives as much as possible. So what I do do is try to use things such as like beans, chicken, um, salmon, and things like that to help me and my clients maintain our regular eating habits throughout the week, especially if we're in a process of gaining weight. Um, right now, my little brother is one of my clients and he's in the process of working out and gaining weight. So therefore with him, I ask him what, or I create three meals throughout the week that I will mix up to expand over the four day period. So that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, from there, he gets two large meals, a protein meal, and a carbohydrate meal. Um, he also is to remain on his regular eating habits. So whatever he was doing to maintain his body weight before, he's to still be doing that and eating at that same time. So if he was just eating once a day at one o'clock, he's supposed to be eating whatever he was going to be eating at one o'clock any other day. If it was fast food, I told him, me personally, I allow it because everyone deserves the right to choose what they what they want to eat, unless you have a particular health reason to why you can't eat something. I never think that just because, I'm sorry, I have some pasta boiling. Um, I never feel like there is no definite reason why you should put yourself on a particular diet unless that is something that you are really serious and really ready to commit to. I myself maintain eating the right things as of course that's on the food pyramid and taking those categories and adding it to my meals every day and making sure at least I'm tackling one of those meals every day. On top of that, I am doing my own pro my own protein shakes. So, of course, I do um, a shake after my workout, which is usually in the morning at 4 a.m. And I do a, another one after I train one of my clients, usually around five or six in the afternoon. So with that being said, um, right now I just have some pasta on the back burner and we're just trying to make sure this pasta is gonna be good. That's all we're gonna do with that. That is, what I do with my pasta is just simply portion it out and hand it to my clients and I let them either add their choice of whatever sauce they want to or to eat it plain. But the goal is to get the carbohydrates from the pasta in your body, not necessarily adding on with the calories. So that's one thing I do express to my clients. It's like if you eat this plain, you're just you're getting what you need to. Yes, it's calories, but you're getting the carbohydrates you need, especially when you're needing you're you needing energy to work up or to bulk up. Because that is a part of bulking up and a lot of people don't recognize that. Um, and it's a good healthy way to maintain to maintain your body energy. So, I also have some beans that I'm soaking that's going to go in a crock pot. Um, actually, those kind of need to be in the crock pot like right now. So, we're definitely going to get that going because um, those have been soaking for a while now. So, with my beans, it's pretty much just a big thing of pintos with some broth. Um, I like to use chili seasoning that um, was given to me as a gift. And I like using that chili seasoning. Seasoning it is um, a seasoning that is given to me from Albuquerque, New Mexico, um, and it is very, very, very good in in doing like a bean stew. 
So this is Santa Fe seasoning or Santa Fe seasons and it's all natural and this is a red chili chicken base and this is a green chili chicken base. However, I like to use them in my beans with my crock pot. Um, I get that on high, I get that boiling going and I let that sit to the side, chop up some onions, toss them in there and voila with that. So we're gonna work on getting that together. So as you can see, the crock pot is very big. Yes, it's big enough for me to be able to cook enough for myself and my clients. And my clients are, they are very aware of what the menu is and they are very aware that they are always allowed to make any changes that they prefer or any preferences that week. Um, because I want them to be able to also enjoy their meal and not just um, sitting it to the side and playing with it until they can't eat it no more. Because uh, then you're not doing what you're supposed to do. The whole purpose and the whole goal is to enjoy life. And how can you enjoy life if you're not enjoying the food you're eating? That to me doesn't make any sense. I don't know if, any, if it makes sense to anyone else, but to me, it doesn't. So, that's what I prefer. Um, so, with my crock pot, I pretty much, honestly, I honestly just like to make sure that, of course, since it's been out, that it is clean. You just want to kind of clean up on the inside of the rest of the out because you know they sit out so so once you do that once you clean your crock pot I put it back in there it's kind of best to always also wipe it down because when it heats up you don't want to damage the heater A lot of people don't know that. So I like to go ahead and just get my crock pot going. We got it on high. We got our beans going through. We're just gonna go through them. They've been they've been sitting for a couple of hours, and so. Once we got our beans strained out, I got a drain somewhere around right here. Um, and these are these photos are looking like they might be out in the city. So since it's not a string, you do kind of have to taste it since it's a bow tie. And we're going to let that sit just one quick second. We're going to get our drain for our beans. Um, we're going to get our cutting board. Sometimes you have people who don't know how to Wipe the cutting board down properly. So we get that wiped down. We got our bean strain. So, have our garlic. Have our butter. 
And we got some onions in here somewhere. The broccoli, we got the mayonnaise. There's an onion. We got our onion. It's a great thing you got a big onion because had you got a small onion, I would have had to run back out. So I guess it's kind of good to thank him for getting a big onion. So And we're just going to sit up here and slice this off. Because we're just going to take a piece of it. That way we can get that down like that. Oh, we're actually just going to take half of it. And. So we're going to set that to the side because we're going to use that one later on. And we're just going to take one of the halves and, of course, peel off the sides around it. Get ready to get those pastas. So what we're going to do with this onion is just simply chop it up so that it goes and it divides nicely within the beans. If you notice, I chew on my tongue a lot when I'm concentrating. So if you see me talking more than just rant or randomly ranting, it's because I don't want to be seen chewing my tongue, but I can't help it. It's actually a concentration habit. And I really don't mind it. And so with these beans, I mean, with this onions and with this garlic. So, if you don't like to mince your own garlic, I don't mind mincing mine. Um, but when I'm doing a large portion to save some time, I really do prefer the um, minced onion in the jar more so than anything. If you're not going to actually cut up the onion yourself, I recommend that most. I mean, the garlic yourself, I do recommend that mostly. And there's nothing wrong with um, doing it this way couple of scoops of minced garlic. We're going to toss these onions in there as well. I'm going to toss that. I'm going to toss that. Now we got, we're going to rinse our beans off one more time. And we're actually just going to pour our beans in there. I don't know what my dog's about now. I'm going to put that over there. Now, of course, I am still a southern boy at heart. So I do believe in being thick. Now, People say butter and all that stuff is not good for you and things like that. And they may be correct. But there's a lot of things out here also that aren't good for you that they suggest that you necessarily eat as well. So, me being me, I do, and I'm not going to tell anyone not to, but if you want to use an organic butter or you know someone who can turn their own butter, that's even better. However, me, I want to use some blue bonnet. It is only... 74 cents at Walmart. It might be 94 now, but you know, as prices go up, as you girls keep stealing from the stores, the stores have to go up on prices, you know, to match the amount of stuff that y'all are stealing. So I didn't have to go back and then get some more butter. So we do that, we set that to the side, we clean up a little bit, and we're just going to get all this cleaned up out of the way. We got that taken care of. We're now going to add our chili base. Now, this time, I, I think I have... I do have the green chili base, but I don't think it's open. 
No, it is not. So we're going to stick with the red chili base. Mm -hmm. Pour a hefty amount. It's all right. It's all right. And it's going to be bean, so... Pretty sure what I'm looking for. I won't give it a five. Oh, bingo. So, of course, you're just gonna put some water in there. I'm gonna go ahead and let that little simmer around, around, around. We're gonna let that simmer around, around, and around. We're getting there. You want to make the make sure that the water or the or the broth. Now you can use broth or you can use water. Of course, broth has more sodium in it, um, but of course, water is alkaline, so you know no different. Um, so it's pretty much your choice. But you want to make sure that the water comes a few inches above the beans, above the height of the beans. So try to make sure your beans are spread out as even as possible. Um, Because these beans are going to soak all that stuff up. Alright. So we're now going to get that lid. And we're going to cover that up. And we're going to get these, these, this pasta drained. We're going to take this to the side. And now yeah, we're going to get this pasta drained. So we're just going to rinse out our drain and we are just going to drain these now the think about these is we're going to go ahead and plate these and put these in the um, in their portion containers because we want to make sure that the pasta does not dry out in the air. So the quicker that we can get this cooled and, and I mean separated, cooled and in the refrigerator, um, the better they'll be and the fresher they'll be throughout the week. Got a few left and it's gonna stick to the bottom. And that took care of that. Now, excuse me for one sec, got something in my eye. back my back mm. so yeah we got the pasta off now and what we want to go ahead and do is like I said we're going to go ahead and plate that and dish that out we want to go ahead and get that out the way we can go ahead and start preheating our oven so we're going to go ahead and do our chicken and our broccoli casserole because that's on the menu this week yeah you Matt you when you're bulking up I feel like um out you know better. Excuse me. Um, I feel like when you are, where was I at? Oh, excuse me, I remember. I feel like when you are meal prepping or you're bulking up, yes, you want to eat the things that's going to help you bulk up, but you also want to eat the things that you enjoy. <laughs> Make sure you're putting things in your menu that you really do enjoy eating. So that way you enjoy eating the stuff that you don't like on that's on your plate as well. Um, some people don't understand that and they don't and they just try to push on you, eat this right, eat this now, eat this this way, and do that. And, and me personally, throughout different methods and techniques of dieting and eating properly and eating habits. I do still, I do tend to eat rarely, on occasionally, pork and beef. 
I mostly do chicken and fish because they're both the healthiest for you. However, red meat does have a lot, does have protein in it as well. So does pork, but barely any. Um, so more so you get your, a lot of good protein from your chicken and from your fish. Um, salmon, tuna, the meat, fish like that. Um, tilapia doesn't have a lot of protein. Um, um, all that mahi, mahi doesn't. You know, that's all fancy fish for whatever you're just wanting to eat when you're out and enjoying yourself. That can definitely be one of your just regular meals of the day. So just keep that in mind when you're definitely bulking up. You definitely want to do those types of meals. Um, so we got that going. We are now going, we got to go ahead and go ahead and plate this. And so pretty much all I'm going to do is plate the pasta. I'm not doing anything like, or bowl up the pasta. I'm not doing anything special. I'm not doing anything special. I'm not doing anything fancy to it. That's pretty much all I'm doing. However, I do have to, um, I will have to get some more bowls that I'm washing because like I said, I have myself and two of my other clients to um, spread throughout the spread more food throughout so I already cooked taking care of one of my clients so this is now taking care of the stuff that me and my brother who is another one of my clients um, we eat throughout the week that helps us maintain our nice physique so I'm just gonna get something I'm gonna show you some some dash of stuff that I use to go on my pasta that I give to my brother to make sure that he's not adding a lot of sodium and things to his pasta which is just organic seasonings um, those seasonings are so this is this is Penzi spices so I use one of these you can see that and these I like this because it's very simple it's just for pasta um, you can pretty much just put it on the pasta I pretty much just shake it on there a little bit, stir it up, and then plate it for my little brother um, and myself as well. So we're just plating the pasta for him. Four days for the week, one for each day. And then of course we have my little bowls for me because I don't necessarily, I like the my size so I just want to gain just a little bit however. He does make sure I have to give my little brother. Um, even though he's one of my clients, he still buys enough for me to say, oh well here's some for you too and I, I think that's so sweet of him. So shout out to my little brother for Always making sure that I'm taken care of too. Um, so we'll put some more back in his because since he's bulking up, he can eat the most. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And boom, boom, boom. So we're just gonna come back over here. We're gonna sit this over here. Go ahead and get that rinsed off. A little soap in there so we can use that shortly. We got some 
chicken we're about to get in the oven. We got the oven preheating. Uh, what else do we have next to do? Once we get that, let's go ahead and get this pasta. So you have two options with the pasta. I prefer to alternate each week um, how you want to reserve the pasta throughout the week. I like to just add a little bit of olive oil to each one. When I add a little bit of olive oil to each one, I just feel like that in itself helps save it because you give it a good shake. And so that way when you reheat it, that oil helped lock in some of that moisture and some of that water from the pasta before it dried out. Um, let's give it a good shake. You do the same thing with the next one. Give it a good shake. Next one. Give that one a good shake. And final one. Give that a good shake. And pretty much what I do with these is these, I put these right in the refrigerator until it is time for me to either have my little brother come and get them or um, I take them to him. Um, I'm pretty much, now that I have two clients, I probably much just do my own like delivery thing. So that's another option that is always available to you um, within the premium package. So therefore, it's something to consider. And mine, I do the same thing. I just pour, um, add a little bit of olive oil to them. Just a little bit. Uh, I use a lot of olive oil throughout the week. It is very healthy for you, especially if you can get something that's organic. Um, the more organic, the more healthier, the better, of course. It's one of those things. Yes, you start building up a, a box of these so that way when it's time to package them and deliver them and pick them up from your clients when it's time to redo them. Um, everybody has theirs. And every now and again, I get a few, um, few people who tend to not have the, all the lids when they bring them back. However, I remember my mom used to say back in the day, she would take things out the house, like spoons, plates, bowls. She, has, she would always make these comments, and it's like my dishware walking right out the house. And now, since I've been doing like this prep thing, I really understand what she means by that. Like, you really see how the containers come back short a bowl, shorter lid, or something like that. Or so even now and I look in the cabinets and think the same thing. I'm like I'm missing a bowl, I'm missing a plate, I'm missing a cup. And I'm like, dang mom, you are so right. So y'all think y'all kids aren't listening, believe me, that we are paying attention, we are listening, and in the future we are gonna find ourselves reciting the same thing. So since we have that going now, we're going to actually move back to the kitchen. We're going to get our hands cleaned. Touching this phone. Boom. So the next time, the next thing is our chicken. 
Now, personally, I like to... We might be moving on to the shrimp, I mean to the fish. So we got our beans going and now what we honestly can do is start working on our broccoli casserole. Broccoli casserole. And do just want to take our casserole out, or our broccoli out, like you would think. This was a collar the way it's stuck up in here. to actually just rinse off our container or our drain because we're going to chop them and put them in there. Another great thing to do is to help you save like dish time and time using the dishwasher and things like that is to make sure that you are, before we rinse this, make, let me put this to shake over, make sure that you are usually using like one utensil, one knife, one fork, rinse it off, rechange it. The more you do that, the more you find you wash your hands too. Um, that's something to keep in mind as well. So we're just gonna make sure that these are chopped up nicely for the broccoli casserole. So get the other one. As much of the stock as possible. Make sure you try to cut them small too so they don't cook too long. I like to cut them in half. them a little smaller as well keep these as well a few of them are okay in there which one of these are broken off chop those up toss those chop those up toss those toss those grab all those grab all those just gonna simply rinse this out
We're gonna see this broccoli off. So the great thing about raw uncooked broccoli is different when it is um, is different when it's uncooked raw broccoli versus frozen broccoli. Um, of course, with frozen broccoli, you have to let it unthaw before you can um, cook it, of course. So you get to save a lot of time when you buy it naturally and you buy it by the corn, by the crown themselves. Put that in there. See a few in here that's big, take them out, just kind of chop them up, toss them back in there. See another one or two, chop them up. Toss them back in there. We've got these rinsed off. We've got this out here now. Gonna just rinse these through. Come back to these. Like those, let the broccoli drain. And so while the broccoli is we pretty much get everything else, else that we need for it. We have our cheese. Now, if anybody knows me, you know I'm from the South. So therefore, we're gonna use Dukes. We also use an egg. Sometimes two, depending on how much we're making um, or how many we're making. eggs and mushroom soup so first we're gonna do the broccoli actually I think I prefer and I do to do everything else first I take the cheese the cheese is something I actually do do first. He got finely shredded, but however, this is fine for right now. Um, next, going forward, I suggest using, um, I think it's the fancy shred, maybe, where they're a little bit thicker, and, um, and they're not so thin. Uh, the thin cheese just means it's gonna um, cook a little quicker. You have to take that into consideration when you do turn it off. Um, broccoli casserole. Let's see, make sure this isn't recyclable. I was gonna make sure you can recycle everything. I don't know why this isn't recyclable. This should be. Find out if this is re recyclable and let me know. That would be awesome. You know, save a tree, save a life. It's my motto. So we're gonna get some mayonnaise. Pretty much, he got a 16, so this is pretty much like doubly needed, which is awesome because we're gonna cook, end up picking a little bit more than necessary. And honestly, I just shake it in there. shake enough in there you think you might need 
You do the same thing with everything else. Well. Oh. Don't laugh at me. This is old school. He doesn't know that there's ones that you can pull back the top to. Yes, yeah, uh, most of the time I don't even see that stuff either. That's why I don't like going to the grocery store. However, uh, since I have been going to the grocery store, I have been learning to save a lot of money. Um, definitely I'm buying things that are on sale. And also, I had a f good friend remind me that if I am ever at Harris Cedar, um, when they show you the price of something, it's actually, and they say it's on sale like two for $1.99. And they're usually one seventy nine a piece or something like that. Um, you usually can get one for half the price. So or yeah, whatever half of the one ninety nine is, or basically you can get one for a dollar, saving you the seventy nine cent. You know what I'm saying? I ways a way to save. So yeah, that was good. I remember him telling me about that. Um, and then once you got that in there, you're gonna go ahead and add your egg as well. Now, you might have to add more of everything depending on your broccoli size because that's very key. You definitely want to make sure that your broccoli. I'm gonna do with my big fork. You will definitely want to make sure that your broccoli is being is gonna cook nicely and evenly. So I do so I go ahead and mix this up now before I add my um, broccoli too. And I just kind of look at it and see how it looks. And if I feel like I'm going to want to add some more to it, then I go ahead and I add some more. And I don't be afraid to add anymore. However, I am thinking one more egg. The rest of this, I will not need these anymore. I have a friend that has suggested I throw these in the backyard. Because since I do not compost. Ow, 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 ow. So, that's what I do. And they make their way somewhere outside for ants or something to get to them. Add more of that. Mix this up. We got two eggs in there now, so it'll be really big. Take a look at it. And simply air to broccoli. You know, just go ahead and make sure you're getting it all up in there. All between all those nooks and crannies, in between all that, all those thoughts, so that it soaks up. And just keep on stirring it around and stirring it around. And the rest of my mayonnaise to it. And this will feed him all week. We're gonna rinse this out so this can be recycled. And 
We're just gonna mix this up and get this going. And we got this mixed up pretty well. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Ain't that it? Yes. Come the real Corey. You better add some salt and pepper into that and give it some bow. Yes. Yes. Just a tad. Just enough to get it in your flavors and get your juices and tongue going. Mm hmm Now, what I like to do is I really like to get Ritz crackers with flavor to them. I love like garlic flavored Ritz crackers and you add it on top of your broccoli guys. And the words of Oprah Winfrey, phenomenal! Mm. So, that's what I love to do. So once you got that seated, we can go ahead and put our eggs away. We will no longer need those. We will rinse these off. We'll clear this out of the way because we now need to get our container to do our broccoli casserole. I'm thinking with this size broccoli, this size, hmm. Is the best thing to do in this case, and since you have the broccoli, is just a nice little layer and crumble it. So we're actually going to use, you know what, I think that is smaller. Hmm. Actually, no, we're going to use those. Yep. So unfortunately, I did forget foil, but that is all right. I told you, I would forget something. And my brother, he'll get everything on this. And if I forget something, that would be me, I tell you. So we're actually gonna use this glassware that I'm washing out. Make sure that it is properly cleaned, of course. Um. I'm gonna rinse this off. And give this a good drying out. And just so we can butter this down or glaze this down. With some olive oil so that it is not sticking. Boom, 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 boom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so now this. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, it, baby, hit it. Mm -hmm. Spread this out. Get it all stretched out up in there. We're gonna actually, you see I got some broccoli crumbs going through right here. We're gonna shake that in there. And don't let no food, don't let no meal go to waste. That's what my mom used to say. That's one thing I do do. Make sure I make sure I use everything. Or I at least try to. I say that much. Try to make sure you use everything. So we're just going to scoop the remaining out. I'm going to 
brush over there, make sure we get enough to spread out, make sure the broccoli is not laying on top of each other. The great thing is that they're so big that you don't have to really worry about making sure that they are to the top because most of them are already filling out the bottom of the pan, which is a great thing. And so then, this thing right here that I need to get to. Ritz crackers. I tell you, me and that tongue. That's when you know I'm really into it, though, you know? Now that I made this part, it's all right. I'm crumbling them up inside the pack just so that they can fall out and crumble on top of the broccoli in the broccoli mixture. It's just nice and flowing. Uh -huh. Definitely want to try to get that as even as possible and let that fill in the crevices of spaces that are um, too, that have a lot, just maybe a little short on the size of the, where the broccoli stalk is forming. They can get into that and that can soak up some of that juice. Three-fourths of a stock of a stack or a stick, excuse me. Put it right in there. Paper towel, you know, can't let this grease be popping all over the place. Let that cook for a little bit. We get that out the way. So basically what we're doing is getting all of our vegetables and stuff out the way right now. Our asparagus is next. this because if it's too cooked it separates and it separates really really quickly but if it's just right you get you can see some of the white in there and you let some of that fall on top of the crumbs themselves too give some of those pieces some of those flat I mean yeah some of those pieces a little extra buttery flavor and of course, and then I'll let it drip out. And then this, my friends, is going in the oven. Middle bank. Mm 
It's three. It's three seventeen. It's gonna be in there for about forty minutes. Um, we got our beans over here going. Mm -hmm. They got about three hours left. Let's get this onion covered back up. We're gonna use that shortly. We need to rinse this out so we can go to the recycle. Um, we now are going to do the asparagus. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to turn the camera around and, or actually no, let me clean off my counter a little bit. So I do like to season my um, chicken and my salmon. Um, honey for local, local honey. Local honey is the best for your teeth, for your body, for your food. Local honey. If it's local honey, you will not have severe allergies next spring season. Listen to me. Local honey. As local as possible. Farmers markets, organic stores, even at Harris Teeter or Walmart. Walmart got it. It's local. Winston-Salem Farms. Well, Golding Farmers, but located in Winston-Salem. And they have um, beehive or bee nest, whatever you want to call that. Or they farm bees, excuse me, for their honey in Virginia and North Carolina, right along the border. Boop! Now, of course... In any process or any form of fashion while cooking, it's always nice to have you a nice glass of something. Now, however, as you see, this is in a shot form um, because I am also cooking kind of quickly. And, um... Yeah. Small little glass of red wine is very good for you. So now, um, we also got this bag to get rid of. Bananas. Every morning, you should at least indulge in a banana. Me, I like to indulge in a banana and a cup of hot chocolate. Or a banana and a protein shake when working out. Light brown sugar. Brown sugar is always best. It doesn't matter what brand. Of course, organic is always better, but organic can be more expensive. And if you're always budgeting like me, you want to make sure that you are doing what you can do to save some money. I went into Walmart and I got uh, a 24-pack of water, $174. Pack of bounce dryer sheets, $197. And actually got the 60 count. Uh, they were on sale or whatever. They were a rollback. Because you know Walmart, they don't do sales. Um, got some seasoning for my wings. And for my salmon, they were both on sale. Um, got the honey for $5. Excuse me, rollback. Um, the bananas, they were only $0.44 cents a pound. So two pounds, a dollar even. Got me a little bath food, you know, to touch up under these arms. Um, that was a dollar. Um, what else? The gain, I got a pack of those for 16 count for only four bucks. Awesome. And the brown sugar for 98 cents. So I got all those for only $20. That is a great deal, if you ask me. Because a lot of times, you go in the store and you get 10 items... You are already at $40 and $50. And you're like, for 10 items, god damn. So for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 items exactly. I probably saved, I would probably say about $20 if some of these items were at other stores. Or I wasn't able to get them on sales price. Asparagus. Um, asparagus is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to rinse this bowl out. I 
Actually, we can rinse the asparagus right in this. We're gonna get the asparagus cut up too as well. Now I like getting like the thinner asparagus. I feel like when you get the thick asparagus, you tend to find yourself not really liking it and not really eating them like that. So I do tend to get the smaller asparagus. Um, I find that those are definitely very easy to indulge in. Um, so does my clients. My clients prefer to eat the smaller asparagus as well. So that's a great thing. This is going to be recycled. Also, make sure you're always kind of like tidying up as you go along. Like these, I won't need these anymore. That way, as you're cooking, as you're going, you find yourself not getting that much of a mess. Um, we want to go ahead and get this bowl cleaned out for our um, mat. For our um, for our mashed sweet potatoes. So we're gonna have we're gonna slide this over here, this over here, so we can rinse that off. So of course we're gonna do the side thing. Boil these, mash them up, add some honey, add some brown sugar. Voila! And go ahead and get the water going for these. Get our water going. Something about the back eye I always feel safe about. I swear, this boy goes out and buys like two or three things sometimes. I just think I feel one of them. But, that boy. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. You take care of these. Because now we're going to do our sweet potatoes. If you have your peeler, definitely recommend one of those. It will save you a lot of time and it will save you a lot of potato. Because I have to get a small one. And the kind I need. I don't think I gonna go down here <sighs> unfortunately I'm gonna have to go to the store to get foil and sweet potatoes these are regular potatoes hmm
I should cook these in my mouth. I think I am going to do that. I think I'm going to cook these anyway. And he will know next time to bring me the right time. So we're going to improvise. And since the skins of the rustic potatoes are better left on, we're actually going to just chop these up and roast these. Got this going. Cut these two in half. Boom, boom, boom. Turn them this way. Boom, boom, boom. Move them over. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. They can be different sizes, it's okay. get some of my ends off. I do do that. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. And boom, boom. Boom, bam, 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 bam. So I'm this way and two cut. Boom, boom. Grab these, turn them sideways, two cuts. Boom. And boom. Got this one, got that one, and got that one. And move this around. Boom, 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 boom. those so I pretty much like I said cut off the ends Oop, wrong way sorry right. and we'll just do it this way what's that using that that anymore. <sighs> Get this out. Rinse this off. Because we're going to use this for our, or use this glass dish for our roasted potatoes. So we're just going to take these and nicely move them over here. 
to our container and to our um, We're gonna mix that up. Now, me personally, I get a little bit of pepper, a little bit of olive oil, so you can mix it all together. And smokehouse seasoning McCormick's. I like using this because it gives the potatoes like a very good roasted like bourbon taste and they taste like almost like candy. Let's see we got a little bit left in there. Let's just shake all that out. We're gonna recycle those. We're gonna mix these up and get that going. Check on that, that's still doing good. So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and get this in the oven now. Um, that's pretty much all we're gonna add to that, actually. I got a little bit of ranch back there too. That'd be a really good flavor to them. I'm sure they would be, I'm sure they're gonna love this. Get that all mixed up in there. And all those juices on these potatoes salivating all in together. Rinse these hands off. Let me get these in there. Five, since we're putting something else in there to take up some space. That lid can go there. Swig on the wine. My choice is an Outback. A Malbec. I love a good, nice Malbec. Malbec, Malbec, however you choose to say it. That's what I prefer. Um, hmm. Yes. Asparagus to me seems to be very simple. I take a container, foil, which I am endlessly running out of. May have enough for this, these meals today. And all we're gonna do with these, lay them down, line them up, and chop off a little bit of the bottoms. Well, I guess the other knife would've been better, huh? But, oh, we get it. There we go, uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. Gonna put the asparagus in there. Just spread it out nicely. With that, we're gonna do the same thing. Actually, we're gonna take just a tad bit this time because I have some butter that we're gonna just put in there. So we're just gonna use this to kind of just like get it going. But I have this butter stick. I'm just gonna finish chopping it up and nicely lay it over there in certain spices. Smiling faces, smiling faces around. Yeah. I'm gonna get that in there, gonna get that cleaned up. And then we got our asparagus in there. We're just gonna also add, I love garlic. People think I like have an obsession with garlic. But garlic is very healthy for you, it is very good for you. It, and oh, you can never have too much garlic. I don't care what anybody say. Garlic makes everything taste good. Everything, 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 except for fries and milkshake. That's one combination that's untouched. Uh, that is ebony and ivory. We can definitely put this back now. So with that, we're just gonna add a little bit of, and pretty much anything you really much want. I prefer to try to make sure everything has a different flavor. So um, with these, what I typically do is I know people are going to be like, oh my god. No, he's not. But I am. I am. Obey. People are like serious obey and Fox Point seasoning from Penzi Spices. And I know y'all are like, he is not adding obey on top of no asparagus. I guarantee you, phenomenal. Mm hmm. Yes. Obey, you cook it with that butter in there and you let that soak up into it. I'm telling you, they go crazy. Look. Seven ready. <coughs> mm, it's good, man. <coughs> Got that covered up. stuff in the oven um and from there we have our fish and dog and we're gonna start marinating and get that together and we're gonna clean up and this seems like the only other option to do get that cheese and you get that chicken seasoning so we got two hours left on the beans, or two and a half, well, two and a half, three left on the beans. We got that stuff in there for 40 minutes for a while. So we can really get the chicken going and get that marinated. Um, we're gonna actually do some cleaning up. We definitely turn the camera this way so I can talk to y'all. So I pretty much do like to make sure that I am staying clean around the kitchen. Because the quicker you, the more you stay clean, the easier, the less you have to do. So I do have everything that I recycle, and make sure I try to rinse those out and all that good stuff. So we're gonna make sure we rinse all of everything out that we're gonna recycle. You know, put up we for rent with flies and all that. And plus, to keep this stuff from rotting when it goes.
So as you can see, this is cleaned out. And it's put in the bag for the recycle, 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 recycle. I got a can. Make sure everything is out of there. Recycle that. You know, with the try not to get into politics too much, but you know, with the Republicans wanting to live on space, I figure if I don't make it to space, at least I can make sure I live here just a tad bit longer than you guys when you do go. Get all that recycled stuff hooked right there. From this way in here, we have to clean up right quick. Go ahead and get our. And we're just going to rinse all this stuff out. So that doing this, I find myself having less to do. when I'm finished with everything else. Plus, if I want to start back doing my next stuff, I already made myself some room. That's another thing I like too, about cleaning up as I go along. Some people haven't mastered that yet, cleaning up as they go. I unfortunately have been able to figure it out. And especially how to improvise when the right things you buy from people aren't on the menu or what you tell me to purchase aren't on the menu. Improvising, improvising is always key. So we're going to shake that off. We got this resting over here. And we got a few more things over here that we can go ahead and get rinsed off. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe this down and see what kind of mess we didn't make. Just a little, a little bit of crumbs around her. We can wipe off. Go ahead and get that closed. And then we can go ahead and get our, get now so we can get this stuff rinsed off. We can get that cheese, that chicken seasoned up. Let it marinate. It's best not to put your knives in the dishwasher. You get that rusty looking look on them. You don't know who eventually kind of wear out their welcome really fast, you know? This out the way. Did that, <clears throat> and we can go ahead and get our salmon together. So 
gonna have one, two, three. Pretty much we want to make sure he has enough for, or we want to make sure they have enough for at least three, or, um, so we're doing chicken and salmon this week, so pretty much you want to have four, so this is going to be one, two, because we're going to have two, as long as he's known, so he's, he has a bit so this is going to be two, and this is going to be two. Next week we'll do chicken and steak. So we'll do steak and salmon, and we won't have to buy any salmon because I already have it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna line. I guess we better turn this around now, huh? Sorry. So we're pretty much gonna line up the um the glass can and the glass dish. three of them in there. Can be in the trash. There's some fish juice down there, so we're gonna make sure we get that up. So, with the salmon, I have a garlic parmesan I'm using. Yes, garlic parmesan on the salmon, yes. Very, very, very good. What I like to do is oil my salmon down with some olive oil. I feel like that locks in a lot of the of the moisture. Just 
pat it down. Instead of mixing it, you pat it down. Pat it down. I'm gonna get some more pack in the corners. Doing that, swipe off your hands. And I'm just add a little bit more in there. Some spots I see that could use an extra boop to them. Now that we have that in there, we're just trying to check everything, see how everything's doing. And the broccoli casserole's coming together quite nicely. We got this broccoli in, got that broccoli in there. That. This won't take long to cook. So we're gonna actually put this in the refrigerator just a little bit. While we focus on our chicken. So with our chicken, I actually have some zesty herb seasoning for that, that we're gonna be using. That's gonna be really exciting. So we're just gonna make sure that chicken is starting to get unthawed nice and wet. And so what I like, how I like to tenderize my chicken is why it's sitting in the water. I know people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I have a friend that um, her name is Michi. Hi, Michi. Um, she taught me. She's from South Carolina. And she taught me to stop marinating, stop marinating my um, chicken, or chop, excuse me, stop tenderizing my chicken with meat tenderizer because it was bad for me and start using sugar. Now, I prefer to use granulated white sugar in the water, just mixing it up like she said. And then after that, she said, you watch your meat comes out so moist and tender. And I love her because she's so, she is so right. So yes, there's some sugar in the water, some sugar water, some sugar water. Just pour enough in there that you can run it around in there. So that back up there for the meantime. And we're just gonna move our hand around in there with the water, with the chicken, let the chicken get in there. To me, rise itself with the Sugar. We're gonna let that sit for a little bit. And here, rinse off our hand. Finish doing up a little cleaning. I always like to look at the timer on the um, crock pot when I'm doing my beans because it gives me an idea too of where I'm at with the um, rest of my meal. I think honestly we're on perfect timing. Not needing the 
with honey this time. So that's great. I'll have it for next time. The brown sugar I didn't need this time either. I will need a stick of butter for my um So, since I have two hours left on my crock pot, I think it's very important that we start adding other things into it as well that we're going to need. So I know some people are going to be like, you're adding that to your beans? Yes. We're going to make a whole meal out of these beans. And believe me, they are to die for. Mm-hmm. Should turn that over and get in there like that. And then you gotta do is pop that lid, bring this out, pop this lid open. And you see they're already in there. You see they're just floating in there. Those beans. Go ahead and add these onions in there. Go ahead and add some more. Go ahead and add them a little bit. Get all that in there. Go ahead and get this pepper in there. So I'm gonna turn that around. We're going to bring these up in here. We're going to turn those around and get those chopped up and get those added. See, well, I see that. Now that's a good pepper. The inside, that's a good pepper. See how this pops right on out. that in there, put this in there, last one, trying to get them, Gonna get this added in there as well. Last one. Rinse this out. 
and go around and stop. Right. Then we do that. We get this stuff going. Get that in there. And we got these yellow, I mean we got these red potato, I mean red, red pepper, excuse me. <laughs> we got these red peppers in there with these green peppers. And we're just gonna add these into there. And then give it a good stir. Stir that up. Get that going. Mm-hmm. We're gonna push that back. We're gonna get this cleaned out and we are going to get stuff out of the oven. So I will be back. We'll be doing our chicken next. Go right along with our salmon, putting that in the oven, and finishing up and collecting all the five meals together. So stay tuned for part two. See you later.